Absolutely. And Majid Memon uh, joining us on this broadcast. Majid Memon, we have the opposition now raising uh, objection to this list, but the Lok Sabha Secretariat stating that this was released in 2021 and this compilation also includes references to phrases in addition to those that are already forbidden in the Commonwealth Parliaments in 2020. You see, there is a need to uh, improve the quality of functioning of our both houses. It is no doubt on that at all. Because, you see, unparliamentary behavior, unparliamentary language, and uh, unparliamentary conduct in the House, you know, has brought, brought shame to us because we have seen how our uh, respectable, honorable members have um, misbehaved in the House by even throwing chairs, etc., and all that. Now, as far as language is concerned, my humble view and my party's stand is, and my leader, Sharad Pawar, has always been standing for uh, orderly behavior in the House. And he has asked all our MPs, whether in this House or that House, you see, never to go to well, never to uh, uh, misbehave or, or use any unparliamentary language. Now, as far as this current uh, gag is concerned, our view is that, you see, who is to decide? Uh, which like which word is parliamentary and unparliamentary? Now, mm -hmm. for example, if a member is asked not to use the word sexual harassment, how is he going to take right. up the cause of sexual harassment? And Mr. Memon, we are also country? joined by a BJP, in fact, leader. We have uh, uh, Rakesh Sinha. Rakesh Sinha, this is a booklet released by the Lok Sabha Secretary. They are saying it was released in 2021, which lists out words and expression that would be considered unparliamentary in both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha ahead of the monsoon session. How would you respond to these allegations coming in from the opposition? You know that uh, uh, how democracy declines can be uh, witnessed in Indian discourse. The opposition parties are degrading not only the uh, parliamentary democracy, but a democracy at large. Because outside the power, they use the language and, and language which is going against the very basic ethos of the constitutional and liberal democracy. Uh, whether it is a Trimul Congress or the Congress Party, every instruction coming from the top leadership. In, in party system, there is, a, there, there is a competitive party system, there is a race for the power. But mm. that doesn't mean that you are going to annihilate the very, very basic premises and principles of democracy, which they are doing. But Mr. Sinha, the both, opposition is also raising this question, even if this list is old and there is, it is unparliamentary, words like corrupt, coward, criminal, uh, these are common words used in English language. How would you propose of them not being used in parliament? You know, there is a difference between the discourse in the street and the, in the parliament. In, if in the parliament we will start using such words, which, which are going against, uh, against the, the decorum of the parliament, then there cannot be a healthy discourse. If you will call me coward, I will use some other term. There is a provocative term. You can uh, perpetuate the discourse, you can attack the government, or the government can attack the opposition by using the very soft words it is not necessary that only the hard words and the abusive words can only, uh, uh, are only tools to attack each other. Therefore, I consider in parliamentary democracy, success depends on the very much on discourse. Because not only the nation, the entire uh, world watches your discourse. The, the discourse is not confined to present. It is also, uh, it also addresses to the posterity. Therefore, Absolutely, but Mr. Sina, the opposition is certainly raising this objection as to why certain words that suit the government is now being considered unparliamentary. Thank you, Mr. Sina, for joining us here on this broadcast.